Hi everybody, uh, welcome to Saltbox. I'm Ben Elliott. We're gonna do a little cooking demonstration for you guys today. Uh, before I get started though, I am gonna take my, my mask off um, so that you can see my face. We definitely wear masks here all the time um, and practice all the COVID safety protocols, but for the purpose of the video today, I'm gonna take my mask off for a little bit. <laughs> um, but anyway, welcome to Saltbox. I'm really pleased to be partnering with the Concord Museum um, leading up to their Valentine's Day greeting card. Um, they were really nice to ask us to participate and um, we're really excited to show you guys how to make um, one of the dishes off of our um, Valentine's Day menu, which we're offering here at Saltbox leading up to Valentine's Day. Um, today, we are gonna make sweet potato gnocchi. It's one of the entrees on our menu for Valentine's Day. Um, it's really, really easy. I know that we'll have the recipe available for you guys to look at as well from home. So if you wanna make the dish along with the video, if you wanna rewatch it or just have some fun trying it at home, please feel free. It's, it's super easy. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, so basically what uh, we're gonna do is we're gonna take Sweet potatoes, ricotta cheese, some flour, some eggs, and some Parmesan, and blend them all together and form them into gnocchi, little pillows. And we're gonna pair that with a braised beef dish that's been uh, braised in red wine with aromatics. Um, and I think it's gonna be a delicious winter dish. Um, and also, I mean, what's more romantic than braised beef? I don't know, but, <laughs> but anyway. Um, what we usually do with our sweet potato um, is, I've got one here just to show you, but we take a bunch of sweet potatoes, we wash them, we pierce them with a fork a few times, we stick them in an oven, 350 degrees, 45 minutes or so, maybe an hour until they're nice and tender. Um, once they're tender, take them out of the oven, let them cool, and then um, what we usually do at that point is just slice them open, and with a spoon, you can very easily just scoop the, the stuffing. The skin usually peels right away, but if, if you need to use the spoon to, to uh, scoop out the filling, super easy to do, nice and soft. And that's really what it's, it's gonna look like. I've got some already prepared here. The recipe calls for about a cup and a half of roasted sweet potato. We also have some fresh ricotta cheese, some microplaned, finely grated Parmesan cheese. We get some salt, some pepper, um, flour, and eggs. The way I usually make these kinds of gnocchi is I start with all of the wet ingredients first. So I've got the I've got the pureed or the mashed sweet potato, and after I remove them from um, the, the skins, I just added them to the bowl using the back of a spoon, just kind of break up whatever pieces might be might be there. So it doesn't have to be a perfectly smooth puree, but it's soft and should should soften up pretty nicely. Um, to this, I've got the ricotta cheese. I'm gonna add that in. I've got some Parmesan cheese. Add that in. Never have enough cheese. <laughs> um, I definitely want to add a good amount of salt and pepper. We are gonna be adding flour and egg to this but I like to season with the salt and the pepper, I don't wanna say aggressively, but generously, um, before adding the flour and the egg. Because once you do that, you need to kind of make up that difference with ahead of time with, with your seasoning. So I've got the uh, sweet potato, which I've mashed up, the fresh ricotta cheese, the Parmesan, and the salt and the pepper, and definitely taste as you go. You wanna make sure that this is delicious. Um, Everybody's uh, tolerance for salt is different, but I certainly like to, you, you want this to be just delicious. So salt certainly helps that. Um, once I've got all of this combined, I'm then going to add in one egg. And I'll mix that in. All right, once the egg is incorporated, which doesn't take too long, We'll then start to add the flour. And I don't wanna add all the flour at once. I'm gonna do a little bit at a time. The recipe calls for about two cups, roughly. Now, the 
that two cups of flour is also going to account for some of the flour we're gonna put on our, on our table or on our, our workspace to keep it from sticking. So it's kind of one of these things where you have to do it a couple of times to really get a good feel for it. But a good place to start, I think, with this is about a cup. So we'll add that in. Well, I'm gonna start with a half a cup and incorporate that, fold it in. And I'm keep, you'll notice I'm keeping the, the, the dough in the bowl. Because the dough is pretty, pretty wet when you first get started, it makes it, makes it a little easier to, to, to work with. You can see how it's starting to come together. I'll add in a little bit more of that flour. Fold that in. And when the dough starts to kind of pull away from the bowl and not stick anymore, that's when I know it's kind of a good time to dust the table your workspace and be fairly liberal and then turn your mixture out onto the board. So from here, you can see how soft it is. It's very, very soft. Um, gnocchi is one of these beautiful dishes that you got to find that balance. Too much flour and the gnocchi is going to be kind of dry, a little tough. It'll stick to your teeth when you eat it. Um, so finding that happy medium of just enough flour to hold it together, um, you're gonna end up with a very light, pillowy uh, finished gnocchi that's really pleasurable to eat. So this is still pretty soft. I'm gonna add a little bit more flour and just gently knead it in. Bench scraper, which I have here, is a really helpful tool for this. Inevitably, some of the gnocchi dough will stick to the table. So it's nice to kind of help keep the table clean by just using the bench scraper to, 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 to move it around. It also helps, um, it helps knead it, actually. So you don't really need to go crazy. I'm gonna add a little bit more because I really, I really feel like this is still a little wet. Um, I don't wanna add too much, but I wanna make sure they don't fall apart when I put them in the water. So this feels pretty good to me. Um, it's still soft. Um, it's got a little bit of give to it, but I can, I can pick it up and it doesn't fall through my fingers or anything like that. So that, that tells me that it's probably in pretty good shape. So at that point, at this point, I'll just clean this off, make sure I don't have any extra pieces of, of dough on the board and the board is nice and clean and dry with more flour. I'll spread it out pat it with my hands into a rectangle. And then you can either use a, a chef's knife or your bench scraper. And then I just cut strips. Reflower, because this part that is exposed that was just cut will, will be a little sticky again. So I like to roll those little tubes of dough just to coat them. Kind of do one at a time, get them all ready. Let them sit. All right, got them all lined up. And doing one or two at a time, you know, don't rush it, take your time with it. I'll take my, again, my knife or my bench scraper and I'll just cut, you know, roughly half inch, three quarter inch square um, pieces off of each off of each tube. Now you can do a couple different things here. You can take your bench scraper. I do want to flower my table, my board here. Uh, you can take your bench scraper and just call it a day right there. You don't have to roll them into balls if you don't want to. Um, but if you do, great. Just quickly with well floured hands, roll them into balls. They don't have to be perfect, but once you've got them to a place that they're relatively round, you can take either a fork or a gnocchi paddle. If you don't have a, if you don't have a gnocchi paddle, a fork is great, but I'm a sucker for all things cooking, so I have a gnocchi paddle. <laughs> um, but I just roll, just gently roll the gnocchi right off the paddle. You don't want to press too hard. 
but just let it roll off. And you'll see the little grooves that are formed on the gnocchi from the paddle. That's kind of that telltale gnocchi design. The fork is totally doable, but it's actually, it's a lot harder. <laughs> so again, I, li I like the paddle. But once you've got them all formed, at this point, if you're gonna be eating right away, I'd like to have a pot of water on the stove, get that, bring that to a simmer, salt your water for sure. Um, if you aren't gonna be eating right away and you're making these ahead of time, um, it's totally fine. And, and actually, I, I might suggest going ahead and freezing these. Once they're rolled onto your, on your, on your cookie sheet here that's well floured, stick this in the freezer for overnight or, and then bag them up tomorrow and you have them for next Sunday's dinner or um, stick them in the freezer for 15 or 20 minutes and that helps hold them together so when you go to put them into the boiling water to eat them, you don't squish them when you pick them up off the, off the, uh, off the board. Little, little tricks of the trade that hopefully are helpful. But basically, that's it. It's like I say, it's, it's almost embarrassingly easy, but it's a lot of fun, great with kids, great on Valentine's Day with your, with your honey. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I hope you guys give it a try. All right, guys, we're back. Um, we've got our finished dish here. Um, we've cooked the gnocchi, which you've seen us do. I wanted to talk a little bit for just a second about the sauce. The sauce itself is just a very classic um, braised dish. We, we use short ribs. Um, we braise them with aromatics, um, celery, onion, carrot, bay leaf, thyme, garlic, a lot of red wine, cook it down, and we let those short ribs roast in the oven or braise in the oven, rather, um, at a low temperature for a few hours until they fall off the bone and very, very tender. And we pick that meat off, off the bone when it's finished. Um, the braising liquid that was left in the pan, we strain that and we reduce that liquid down so it intensifies and all those flavors from the meat and the vegetables and the wine all come together. Um, and that becomes the sauce. So you're not losing anything. All the flavor is here. Um, so then we just reheat that sauce. We put our, our, our picked um, short rib back into the sauce. We put our cooked gnocchis in there. And then we have, we have the dish. Um, to finish it up, um, certainly this is definitely, as you can see, a very fall winter dish with the colors, which is great. But I certainly love for color, but also for flavor some fresh herbs, parsley, chives, whatever you might have, scallions. It's beautiful, but it also that, that herbaceousness, that freshness kind of helps cut the heaviness and the fat of the dish, which I think is important. Um, if you like a little bit of extra heat, you can put some, some chili flake on there if you wanted to, a little pinch of sea salt. Um, and because there's never enough cheese on anything uh, ever, um, some more of that microplaned um, Parmesan or Pecorino. If you have blue cheese and you want to crumble that on there, great. Um, doesn't matter. Cheese. Melt a couple slices of American cheese on top of this in the microwave. Mwah. <laughs> um, I'm kidding, but not really. Anyway, um, thanks so much again, everybody. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Happy Valentine's Day. See you soon.